Hi, everybody. My name is Kevin Tengon, and I am the Vice President of Marketing for Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Barani Realty in New England. I started in real estate in 2010 and had co-founded a franchise brokerage in Hawaii before venturing out to the East Coast. Prior to my career in real estate, I worked on advancing technologies in digital filmmaking for Academy Award winning visual effects studios in Hollywood. That was back in the mid 90s. And let me tell you, back then, it took a room full of equipment to do what this thing right here can do today. Thanks to technology, it has never been easier to create, publish, and distribute digital content. We can write articles, record podcasts, take photos create videos, and distribute it to everyone we know, as well as complete strangers, sometimes by mistake, but hopefully mostly on purpose. Today, we are creating an enormous amount of content with these devices. And when it comes to just video, more content is uploaded to YouTube in a single month than all of the major TV networks in the US have created in the last 70 years combined. And we're not just creating more content. I think we can all agree that media consumption has pretty much gone from prime time to all the time. In fact, between YouTube and Facebook alone, more than 170 billion hours of video were watched in 2017. So when it comes to creating marketing content, the question is, how do you stand out in this digital sea? First, we have to understand that there are really two types of marketing. There is marketing to sell and marketing to brand. And as realtors, we not only have to be doing both, but we also need to understand the differences between each. So marketing to sell. What is marketing to sell? Well, that's promoting a product or a service. And I'm confident that every one of you is doing this right now and doing it very well. So what's an example of marketing to sell? Let's take a listing. When you have a listing, what's one of the first things that you do? You put it in the MLS, right? You take these fantastic pictures, you write this awesome description and you stick it up in the MLS. Then maybe you create a listing video and perhaps you put an open house ad in the paper. Um, maybe you send e-cards and emails to co-brokes. Uh, you maybe design just listed flyers and postcards. And perhaps you put an internet ad here or there. All of this is fantastic marketing because it not only helps build awareness about your listing, but it also helps you sell it, which at the end of the day, let's be honest, that's how we're gonna get paid, right? And in order to build our businesses, in order to increase our business, we need new clients as well as established clients. However, when we try to attract new clients and retain past clients, we often fall back on the same marketing to, to sell strategy. We send automated e-cards and emails. We mail postcards and we create ads, mostly around our upcoming open house, right? Instead, we need to be marketing to brand. So when I'm talking about marketing and brand, what do I mean by that? That's really establishing your differentiator. What makes you different from the other realtor sitting next to you or who sent your past client a postcard or who met your future client at an open house? What is your messaging? What are the problems you're trying to solve and what are the results that you're delivering? How are you connecting with consumers? You have to ask yourself, are you connecting with consumers or are you just trying to sell your services? Are you active on the platforms where consumers are active? How are you building know, like, and trust? How are you creating relationships? Remember, we're not just in the real estate selling business. We are in the relationship building business. Now, I know each one of you have those clients for life, right? Not just family or friends. Talk about real clients. Clients who might not be ready now, but when they are, you know they're going to raise their hand and ask you, right? They're going to call right on you. They're going to be choosing you. And in the meantime, they're referring their friends, <clears throat> they're referring their friends and family to you. So now ask yourself, how did you build that relationship? You started by connecting with them, right? Could have been over a coffee. It could have been at an open house, but you started with connecting with them. And over time, you were able to build know, like, and trust. It took time. It took effort. But to gain a raving fan, to gain an actual source of business, it was worth it, wasn't it? And now it's scalable. Instead of building relationships as kind of these one-offs, you know, you meet somebody at open house or you meet them door knocking or you meet them picking up the phone. Thanks to digital marketing and social media, you can build relationships with audiences of 10 people, 50 people, 100 people or 1,000 people at a time. The secret to social media marketing is 
it's social. Today, you have the ability to build that know, like, and trust in people you have never met and possibly may never meet, but you can turn them into a real source of business. So how do you do that? Well, I look at it as a three-prong approach. You have to be relevant, you have to add value, and you have to be you. So the first thing is you have to be relevant. You have to understand your audience and create content that they can relate to. Remember, not everyone you know is ready to buy or sell right now at this very moment. People are at different stages. While some of them, granted, will appreciate those, hey, I expect to see you at my open house this week posts, many more might be months or possibly even years away from buying or selling. So you really have to strike that balance. Relevant also means timely, right? There needs to be consistency. This isn't a, I did it once and that's good enough or set it and forget it, or I'll get to it when I get to it kind of thing. Imagine if you took that approach with other marketing efforts like an open house or call follow-up or door knocking or geo farming. What if you told yourself, you know what? I'm actually not gonna send all those postcards out. I'm just gonna send one of them out. Probably wouldn't work so well, right? So you also need to understand the mindset of today's consumer. And to do that, you have to understand the evolution of the consumer. So this was the original consumer mindset. It was called the consumer's moment of truth, which was based predominantly on broadcast, broadcast marketing. So in this original mindset, it was called the moment of truth. There was the stimulus, the awareness, something that struck an awareness in the consumer. It could be a TV ad, something they saw on TV, maybe something they heard on the radio. Maybe it was one of the postcards they received from you in the mail. Um, or they could be driving down a neighborhood and see a open house sign or a for sale sign and thought, hey, you know what? Maybe it's time to buy a home or you know what? Maybe it's time to upgrade or downgrade. Maybe it was seeing an ad on the internet or maybe it was that one time you went door knocking around the neighborhood. You you raised an awareness. You were the stim there was a stimulus there that sparked an action. And that action was called the first moment of truth, the decision to buy. And that's where the consumer said, hey, you know what? I'm going to go and talk to my local realtor and ask them to help me buy or sell a home. Now, how many? when was the last time that you had somebody call you up on the phone or walk into your office and say, hey, I need help buying or selling my home? Some of you might remember those times. Many of you probably don't remember those times. You know, because the times have changed. And this was evident in a study that Google did back in 2011. They did a study on the consumer mindset and they discovered the consumer had actually evolved. Now, the stimulus, this was interesting. The stimulus remained the same. So that awareness, that was still the same. Something stimulated the consumer to take an action. But instead of going to the expert, instead of picking up the phone and calling you, instead of marching into your office and saying, hey, I need help, Google discovered that the consumer now did something different. They hopped online. They did what they called a social discovery. They did research. They went to their peer groups. They scoured Facebook. They did Google searches. They talked to their, their own sphere, their own friends, and said, hey, what do, you know, what do you know about X, Y, or Z? Back in 2011, 88% of consumers had this behavior. Imagine what it is today, nine years later. And then after doing all of this research, after consulting their friends, their family, going online, doing all this research, then they had that first moment of truth, that decision to buy. That's when they marched into your office. That's when they picked up the phone. That's when they met you at open house, after they have done all this, right? And then after that first moment of truth is the second moment of truth, which is the experience. And then what was called the ultimate moment of truth, which was the shared experience. What was that experience like? I'm gonna share it, I'm gonna write a review. I'm going to push that right back for other people to find and discover. So to kind of simplify the idea, we really need to look at it as we need to interrupt, then we need to engage, and then we need to influence. So we not only have to interrupt the consumer by building awareness through marketing to sell strategies, we need to engage with the consumer in order to influence their decision through marketing to brand strategies. And so how do we do that? We start by being relevant. We need to be relevant to what they are searching for, relevant to their interests, relevant to their needs, and relevant enough for them to keep coming back to us for information. So the, you have to be where the consumer is searching for information and where they're consuming content. 
Now that could be on a website, that could be through social media, that could be anywhere that they're finding information, YouTube. And you have to be delivering the type of information and the content that they are seeking, not one time, not two times, but over and over and over in order to be relevant. You need to reach consumers early on when they're doing that, when they're in that zero moment of truth before the decision making process even kicks in. So how many of you, I'm sure there are many of you out there who have bought, uh, purchased a car in the last 10 years. So when you went to go buy a car, did you walk right into the dealership and say, hey, all right, tell me everything about every single one of your car models here because I'm thinking about buying a car. And then did you go to the next dealership and say, all right, tell me about every single one of your cars here, all the features because I'm thinking about buying a car. Or did you hop online? and do some research. I want this model, I buy this brand, I want these features, I want this color, I want these amenities, I want all of this stuff in the car. And according to this website and this website and this other website, I should be paying this. And then you took all that information with you, marched into the dealership and said, hey, I'm gonna buy a car. This is the model I want. These are the things I want in it. This is the color I want. This is the price I want. Let's make this happen. Did it happen like that? Uh, probably not, right? Same thing with reading reviews. When we hop on Amazon, what do we do? We look at the product. I don't know if you're like me. I look at the star reviews. All right, it has mostly four and a half stars. That's pretty good. And then scroll, 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 scroll all the way down to the bottom. What does reviews say? All right, this one's five star, five star, one star. And take it with a grain of salt. But we read the reviews before we go out to eat at a restaurant. Many of us either ask our friends for recommendations, or maybe we hop on Yelp or you know, any number of Google reviews. And then we start, we start researching more and more about the restaurant, more and more about the product we want to buy. We have become a research it yourself society. We have become accustomed to searching for information, gathering insight, and then making a decision based on what we discovered. In our minds, we've become the experts in everything, right? It's sort of like that scene in the matrix. I know Kung Fu. But in the course of researching, we often come across the same sources, right? We come across the same content creators, those who, who have established themselves as influencers, as thought leaders, or as experts in their own right. They've done that by staying relevant. So what kind of content can you create to keep yourself relevant? Well, what about community? Remember, we're not just selling homes, we're selling community lifestyles. Keep people apprised on what's going on locally in their own neighborhood. If there's one thing that we can learn from Facebook groups and websites like Nextdoor, it's that people want to be engaged with their community. Be the community expert, the lifestyle expert, the digital mayor of your community. Share your favorite stories about the community. You know, share what makes that community unique. Share any community outreach that you may actively be participating in, you know, help raise awareness about those programs. Those are fantastic things to raise awareness about. Engage with those in the community, both online and offline. So that's important, all right? Don't just broadcast. You really have to engage online as you would offline in real life. Engage with those that have helped build the community, the small businesses that make the community what it is today. Interview them and leverage their audiences. If you created a blog article uh, or created a photo post, or maybe you recorded a podcast or shot a video about their business, you bet they're going to share that with their audience. They're going to love that. Um, when you're promoting an open house or a home for sale, ask yourself, does the story that you're trying to tell align with the story a person would want to tell? So when a buyer falls in love with a home, you think they run back and tell their friends, oh my God. I found it, the perfect property. Listen to these stats. Three beds, two baths, 1,400 square feet at 300 square foot throughout, upgrades throughout, close to dining, shopping, activities, freeways, easy access, beautiful front lawn. And wait, are you sitting down? Because I think you need to be sitting for this part. Wait until I tell you my interest rate. Or do they run back and tell their friends, I absolutely fell in love with this home. I can see the kids growing up there. It's in the perfect little community. There's a dog park just around the corner. 
That's going to be perfect for Fluffy. Fluffy is going to have so many friends and everyone is so nice there. This is it. This is home. Don't just give them the facts. They can go anywhere for that. Give them a story, your story. Give them your unique point of view. You need to be relevant. Maybe it's what you love the most about that particular home, that home you're selling, that listing or that open house. Maybe it's sharing what the owners fell in love with when they first purchased the home and what they fell in love with over the years, you know, that if the walls could talk. Perhaps you love cooking and this is the most amazing kitchen you've seen. Or maybe you love city life and this is this condo just happened to be perfectly located in downtown, right in the heart of everything. There are endless opportunities when it comes to telling the story of a community. Another way to stay relevant is through information. Inform people about what's going on in their marketplace. You know, this isn't hearsay. This is real information. This is real data. You need to educate, educate, educate. Position yourself as the information hub, but don't just start and stop with the stats. Remember, they can go anywhere for that. How-to videos are extremely popular. How about how to get your home ready to sell or how to buy a home in a competitive market? I mean, this market is pretty crazy right now, right? Interview your favorite loan officer about rates, pre-qualifications, and appraisals. Um, talk about the state of the market. In these uncertain times, providing relevant, timely, pertinent information and establish you as the expert in the market. In October, this past October, less than a month ago, NAR Chief Economist Lawrence Yun shared that strong existing home sales and record high pending home sales in August indicate no home buying slowdown in the fall. Do your clients know that? Do people in the neighborhoods that you serve know that? Do they know how this information could affect their decision to sell or buy? Keep your audience apprised with what's going on. This one isn't as obvious, but you need to also share your passions. There's a reason you became a realtor. Why? Why do you love to do what you do? What do you love about this industry? What drives you? What wakes you up in the morning? What fuels that fire? You know, maybe it's helping people achieve their financial goals. Share the financial benefits of home ownership. Or maybe it's as simple as you love looking at homes. You know, share your thoughts on your favorite homes on the market, in the area, in the neighborhood. Or perhaps you love home improvement or decorating or staging. What about sharing five fall decorating projects to spruce up your home? You know, make it a little more lively for the holidays. Maybe it's not completely industry related. Maybe you love cooking or baking. Share your favorite fall recipes or your favorite places to eat. The point is not everyone in the market, not everyone is in the market of buying or selling right now at this moment. You need to be there before they even know they need you and stay relevant until they discover they need you while not questioning why they need you. You're the passionate expert in the community who is absolutely fully informed. So that brings us to the second point. You need to add value. When creating content, you need not only to be relevant, but you also have to be adding some kind of value. And value just doesn't come in the form of information or education. It can also come in the form of entertainment. And no one in the real estate industry knows that better than, you guessed it, HGTV. Take a look at that awesome view. Okay, this is pretty amazing. Liz and husband Joey are on the hunt in Chicago. She wants a condo in the city. I love it. I love the open concept. He wants a big house in the suburbs. You see I how much space you get in the suburbs? I agree. While they duke it out on location, usually I get what I want. Not this time. Their agent, who's also Joey's cousin. Condo in the city, house in the suburbs, and, you know, the cousin's the realtor. Uh, is it informing and educating people on how to buy a home? Mm, not entirely. However, it is entertaining, right? After all, people love looking at homes and the lifestyles they bring. So in that regard, the show is providing value, just not in the, this is what's involved in buying a home in the real world type of way. So when determining on how to bring value, don't forget the added value of entertainment. Going back to the previous uh, content examples from Staying Relevant, let's look at uh, community. So in talking about the community, 
Don't stop at the broad strokes. You know, dive into those details. Dive into the why. Dive into the story. Why is that park your favorite park? Why do you always go to that coffee shop on the corner? You know, why is that particular spot the perfect place to enjoy the sunset? Why are you involved with that community outreach program? Why do you love to work, play, or live in the community? You know, that's that's what people really want to know about the place that they want to live or eventually live in or are currently living in. You know, what do you also love about it? Most importantly, don't forget to engage. That's really, really important. Answer questions, ask questions, and comment. Don't just broadcast. Uh, when you're sharing information, decipher the information, right? We can all just rattle off stats. We can rattle off figures, rattle off data. But what does it really mean? How would it affect a decision to buy or sell? How does the information that you're sharing benefit your audience? You know, what are the problems that you solve? And then what are the results that you deliver? So really delve into there. And when it comes to passions and other posts like that, don't just share for the sake of sharing. Be sure each piece of content has purpose, is relevant, and adds value. So when you are sharing your passions, your hobbies, your interests, Stay top of mind by bringing the value of entertainment. You know, if you love to cook, don't just share a recipe randomly. You know how we used to send out the cards or the little recipe cards? You can do that, sure, but why not record yourself making the dish or maybe even photos of the process? Or if you're writing a blog article about a particular recipe, why that recipe brings back all those, me all those memories. Same goes with uh, those home projects or decorating ideas. People can't get to know you if they can't relate to you. So remember that, which brings us to number three, which is be you. You have to connect with your audience, with your consumers. And in order to do that, you have to be you. Okay. Day in the life of a realtor. I'm Melanie Gallo. Hey everybody, it's Tony. Hey, it's Mark and Mark. Celebration 2017, success. We are out at Shelbardine's in the community of Headingley. Now that Halloween is over, it's time to get the pumpkin off your front step. <laughs> Chunkin' pumpkins. <laughs> Real estate isn't simply about choosing what to buy or sell. It's about an ongoing experience whilst establishing your future, your home. It's only natural to want a good life. So why not enjoy the journey and the destination? So I'm talking about the real authentic you. If jumping out of a helicopter isn't your thing, don't do it. Skydiving, hey, you can do that. But also don't be afraid to talk about yourself, to share you who you are when you're not in the office or at a showing or consulting clients or consulting clients. Remember, nothing allows someone to connect with you easier than being you, which is why I love this next video by one of our agents, Kristen. Hi, everybody. Hi. Happy Hi. Tuesday. Hi. Today's video for Tuesday Hi. Tips Hi. is about Hi. real life. Hi. If you don't have kids, you Hi. probably Hi. should turn it off so you don't get scared. Now, Kristen has a regular video series where she shares all things real estate. And every so often, as you can see, she gets real. But that's what helps people connect with her. It's what allows her to build that know, like, and trust. When Kristen's out and about in the community, people often come up to her and say, oh, wait, you're the one from all those videos I see on Facebook. They feel like they know her. Through digital marketing on social media, she has built an audience of people who will probably contact her first when the time comes for them to buy or sell. And in the meantime, they're recommending people they know to her, which has become a real source of business. That's the power and reach of digital media. All right, so we established the why, right? Why do you do what you do? It's to increase your business by building relationships. We figured out that how, which is by being relevant, adding value and being you. So now we really have to tackle the what. What do you do? What are you doing to accomplish your why? You're creating content. Now, there are four main categories of content. There are blog articles, there's photos, there's podcasts, and then there's video. And there's also promotional content, which drives your audience to your primary content. So as you can see, here are a few of the more popular platforms with which you can build audiences and communities around each type of different content. Now, I've started Facebook because, as most of you know, Facebook has really evolved to accommodate 
all types of media, giving it really the most flexibility. It also has highly efficient marketing capabilities and is probably the most populated social network by a long shot. Now, I'm not saying you necessarily have to be everywhere. You don't have to be on all of these platforms, but you do have to be engaged somewhere and you have to be there and engaged very well. So when it comes to the type of media to use, I can't stress enough the power of video. So we've been hearing for years that video is the king of content. You must be creating video, 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 but do you know why? Because I think it's been glossed over a little bit. Well, the why is there is no other medium more effective at creating connections than video. Think about it for a second. I'd be, be, I'd be willing to bet only a few of you might be able to name your favorite newspaper or magazine columnist. A handful of you might be able to name your favorite radio host or DJ. But a vast majority of you, I'm willing to bet, would be able to name your favorite TV personality, actor, actress, news anchor, or maybe even YouTube influencer. And to that point, I bet to some extent, at some level, you feel as though you know them. And since they're one of your favorites and you're able to name them, probably like them, at least as a person, right? And to some extent, you trust them. You trust what they have to say. That is the power of video. It hits on the visual and the auditory. We see body language. We hear inflections in their voice. We experience that person on the screen. So that is the why. That's how it has become possible to build no like, and trust at such a large scale on social media. People on TV, in the movies, they've known this from the very beginning. You know, they've known this from the start. The most powerful form of advertising is on television. And now it's on video and social media. You know, it's no mistake that the term influencer is used. There's a reason for that, right? So the other advantage of video is that if you wanted to, you could actually repurpose your video into every other media type. You can rip out the audio track and turn it into a podcast. You could pull still frames and use them as photos. Uh, there are several online services that you can actually use to transcribe your video so that you can post it up as a blog article. But no matter which format you choose, one thing you have to be aware of, one thing that you have to be aware of is that while the cost to create content has plummeted, the expectation of quality has really risen. So each piece of content doesn't necessarily have to be professionally polished, but in general, the higher the quality, the higher the response, right? So poorly written blogs, you'll probably get a few sentence in, sentences into it and yeah, just skip off to the next one. Blurry photos tend to get scrolled by, podcasts with poor audio quality tend to get skipped and low quality videos tend to get passed up. So let's kind of put it all together. The why is increasing your business by building relationships, right? The how is by being relevant, adding value and being you. And then the what is creating all of this digital content. So we need to now take that, wrap it all up in a nice bow and apply it to our various marketing campaigns. So let's take a look at a marketing campaign or a marketing example, like an open house. This could be a, a new listing, right? A new listing that you have coming on. So what's the first thing that you do? We already said that you take some photos, you do a video, you put, uh, put some flyers out there, put some emails out there, e-cards out there. When doing your video, think about it from that be relevant, add value, and be you standpoint, right? So don't just say, hey, here's my, here's my, my new open house. I hope you see it on uh, this coming Sunday. It'll be open from two to five, one to five, noon to three, whenever you have it. There's three bedrooms, two bathrooms, great front yard, um, nice views. You're going to love it. You know, dive into it a little more. Really make yourself relevant. Talk more about what you love about the home, that you love that it looks out um, along the main coastline, you know, it looks out into the ocean and how serene and tranquil it is and how you can imagine having a campfire there with s'mores with the kids. Talk about that. Bring that relevant add value and you factor to it. So that will be the uh, that will be your interrupter. So that's interrupting the that's interrupting the consumer. The oh, wait, hmm, interesting. I was thinking about moving to the main coastline. But then talk about your next piece of content could be talking about the lifestyle. What is the lifestyle living along this main coastline? You know, the beauty of it. What are the act outdoor activities that come along with it? What 
again, what do you love about it? What do what do some of the people, what do the previous owners or the current owners love about living in this community, this lifestyle? What does that lifestyle bring? Bring that into it, right? There's another piece of content that you can create. Talk about the community. You know, if you love going out to eat, talk about all the great places to eat around this wonderful community. Hey, you know, I was just out the other night and there was a wing, eat, uh, wing contest. It was awesome. All these different restaurants in the area came together and did a wing challenge. So each of these restaurants created one wing. They put it all on a little plate. We got to sample all of it, try it, vote on it, and, you know, some of it. Granted, this wasn't recently. This was back way before everything happened. But this is something that you can bring from a community aspect into, into it. Another thing you can talk about is be informative. The insider, you know, give the insiders, those in the know know. You know, there's this underground art uh, installation that happens once a year. Um, this year, unfortunately, it's canceled. But once a year, they hold this underground art installation in this old bunker, uh, you know, right along the coastline. You go in there and you have all of these great pieces of art that get installed into this area. You know, local artists contribute along with um, artists all along the main coastline. They come in and they and they create this entirely amazing space of just art. You know, give that insider's view. Bring your passion. You know, love cooking. I absolutely love cooking, and nothing's better than steaming some fresh lobsters using seawater taken from right down the street, you know, walk down the street from this amazing home and you can access the beach, scoop up some fresh seawater and make the most amazing steam lobsters possible. Show yourself making it, you know, show the process. Show, show walking down to the beach, gathering that fresh seawater, cooking it up, and then sharing, uh, sharing your passion. Again, talk about the community. Talk about things that you love to do around this community. The rope swing that's hidden off in the, you know, in this little tucked away little area along the seacoast. Talk about how you love going there, swinging from the ropes and how it's just perfect during sunset, sitting there, swinging on the ropes during sunset, enjoying the fresh sea air, the fresh sea breeze. And then finally, talk about your passions. You know, my wife loves collecting sea glass. We go, we love walking the main coastline, picking up sea glass every day. And, you know, recently we found this one and this one and this one. And, you know, our favorite is the, the blue sea glass. And today we've got a whole bunch of white sea glass. But imagine walking along the, you know, at the end of a long day, coming steps from your new home, walking along the main coastline and collecting all of this wonderful sea glass. You know, bring that passion into it. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you have seven pieces of content right there, right? You have the open house, that interrupter, you have the lifestyle, you have the community, you have the information, you have passion, you have community, you have passion again, you have seven pieces of content, you run that once a day, you have a week's worth of content that you can push out, allowing you to be relevant, to add value, and to be you. So then how do you get this content out there? How do you get people to view this content? Well, there's really two ways to promote it. There's organic growth and then there's paid promotion. So when you're talking about organic growth, that content is cycled within your sphere and it's shared outwardly by your sphere. So one of the things you want to take advantage of is when you're doing organic growth, really take advantage of hashtags because hashtags allow others to more easily reference and find your content. And one of the things I like to do is an anchor hashtag. And the cool thing about an anchor hashtag is that this is personal to you. This is a hashtag that you could make up, but keep consistent with it. So it could be hashtag Kevin one two three ABC Kevin sells real estate. It could be that. You know, it could be some term that's unique to you. But try to find something that a whole bunch of people aren't posting to, or that would be unique to you. It could be your full name. It could be some little tagline. But have that anchor hashtag because the advantage of that is now if people are searching or you're telling people to look at some examples of your marketing and where you're taking it, you can say just check out the hashtag Kevin sells real estate. You know, Kevin helps you buy real estate. Go to that hashtag and they'll see a whole slew of examples of what you've done. So anchor your content. Community hashtags are highly, highly important. So in the last example, you'd probably hashtag Maine or the Maine coastline or any of the communities that are in the area. You know, hashtag those communities because people are searching for those hashtags and they'll stumble upon your content. Interests. Don't forget to hashtag interests. So in the case, again, of this open house, which is right on the main coastline, maybe sailing, maybe it's um, stand up paddleboarding, maybe it's outdoors 
or maybe it's hiking, you know, hashtag all those interests, hashtag groups that might be interested in the same thing as well. And if you know people, tag them as well. If you know any influencers that are in the area or that talk about these certain things all the time, tag them because maybe they'll go and find your content appealing and then share that to their own audience. So you need searchable content that will bring new people. Content on social media, on a social media platform has a limited shelf life. I think we can all agree on that, right? We're talking hours, maybe days at the very best, which is why you really need to have a collection of content that people can find, refer to, and visit. So the anchor hashtag, that's a good way to go. But ideally, you'll probably want to have a YouTube channel, a blog site, or really, really is your own website. So why direct a person to your website to simply search for property, you know, really to simply search for homes? They can they can really do that anywhere. And really with the portals and, you know, the big box companies out there, their interfaces, their interfaces are pretty slick. Their apps are pretty slick. Uh, you're going to be hard pressed to keep somebody's attention and stay relevant by just telling them to come to your website to search for property. So why not tell them to come to your site for all of your content? For that library of content that's going to keep them coming back that will add value that will keep you relevant again you need to be relevant you need to add value and you need to be you so the other way of promoting your content and getting your content out there is through paid promotion so paid promotion really reaches beyond your sphere and we're doing that there is target marketing and there's remarketing so target marketing is really effective because it's directed it directs the content right to those who would want that content and demographic targeting is great and it was highly effective for several years and um, unfortunately due to fair housing a lot of the big sites facebook included has really limited the targeted demographic marketing due to fair housing so it's getting kind of difficult to really hone in on a certain group of people um, but you can get creative. You can get creative with your demographic targeting. You can still target interests. So if you have a community page, you can target specific interests. So if you know, if you want to target people who love the outdoors, who love sailing, who love, you know, main coastline, you can target that through your community page and then really get the content out there to, to that audience and really hone in on a particular audience. Remarketing is extremely important as well. This directs content to consumers who have already expressed interest. So I'm sure all of you have seen this. You hop on Amazon, you look at a particular item, then you hop onto another website, and guess what? That item poof, follows you. It's in an ad banner somewhere. You hop onto another website, poof, there's that ad right again following you along. So remarketing is extremely powerful because it can be targeting your content to people who have expressed interest in real estate or in the main coastline or in sailing or in any of these number of interests that you can target with your content. And it doesn't end there. It's a continuous cycle of content. It's a continuous cycle of interrupting, engaging, as well as influencing. As I said in the beginning, most of you are probably experts at the interrupt stage. You know, that marketing to sell, that stimulus, raising the awareness. Now it's really time to hone your skills in on the engagement and influence stages, the marketing to brand, engaging with your audience and really establishing those relationships. You know, building that know, like, and trust, creating relationships at scale. Remember, it doesn't have to be a one-off anymore as it was in the past. Those clients that have become clients for life that we met either at an open house or we met through a business meeting or we met through coffee or lunch or tea or random. Now we can build relationships at scale and turn them into real sources of business. And remember, it's not gonna happen on that first go around, but it will happen over time. Like all the relationships you built, it's happened over time. It's just now you can do that at scale. And in order to be successful, you really need to be always, you need to follow the ABCs, right? Always be creating content consistently. So this is where your past, current, and future clients are. They are online, they're consuming content. The real question is, are you the one that's gonna be delivering it to them? Thank you.